This is the moment so many look forward to in a Sunrises encounter. That was Simon Duell on commentary. I didn't do my best Simon Duell impression, but you get the point. Umran Malik, genuine pace. Umran Malik. I like how he sandwiched the two Umran Maliks around the genuine pace. This is the last knot. My dad told me to say this. And at the same time, Umar Malik is smiling. So is Nicholas Perron, who's just taking a ball well above his head. Kevin Peterson seems to have said yippee on the comms. He also says, there's pace, there's bounce, there is bang. Very Peterson. Matthew Hayden adds, 146, would you please? And Dool says, just a warm up, almost doubting what he's just seen. Malik's first bounce has taken this game to a complete other level. Even though Marco Janssen has taken three wickets in the second over and already opened up or closed up the match. Janssen might well be the world's best bowler in a few years. He has decent pace, incredible height, seam, swing, good accuracy, and he uses a very long left arm. Two of those can probably get you a good career. Three, and you're a long-term player. I don't know what six can do because the only other player that was even close to that was Bruce Reed, and we barely ever saw him fully fit. Compared to Janssen, Malik is fairly one dimensional, but that singular skill is about the sexiest thing in our sport. Just raw, unadulterated pace. Lots of players are quick. We've never had this many bowlers who can deliver it over 90 miles or 145 kilometers per hour. But Malik is faster than that. He's in that Lockie Ferguson level, and there really aren't that many others up there with them. It means that every ball he delivers is an event. So after that opening over, the next ball is a length ball outside our stump. It's too wide and with anyone else, it would be not that exciting. But that doesn't matter because it's a play and miss and people still love it because it was a fast play and miss. What follows from Simon Duell is a quick technical explanation that shows you just why Malik is so fast about his alignment and also his braced front leg. Matthew Hayden wants none of that. He just wants to compare him to Wakar Yunus. Duel to Harris Ralph. And to be fair, he's probably quite similar to both. Pace is pace, yeah? And while the over is still on, the camera has already found Dale Stain, who is the bowling coach for Malik at the Sunrisers, who's watching on in the dugout. Malik has not yet finished his over, and he's already completely changed the entire conversation. In many ways, the game is already done, yet it feels more alive just because he's bowling. Malik's story is well known at this point. He didn't touch a cricket ball until he was 17. We've seen a lot of fast bowlers have to do that because bowling with a tennis ball, you have to be very quick. He was bowling in a concrete net in Jammu and Kashmir, far closer to Raul Pindi and Lahore than Hyderabad, right? And those deliveries in the concrete nets led to him being the fourth player from Jammu and Kashmir to be in the IPL. This is not an Indian cricket hotbed. There's been one Indian international player to come from there and a few other IPL players, most recently Abdul Samad but none of them have been hyped up in the same way because none of them have had this pace. But J&K has had pace before. Abid Nabi was another who was thought to be very quick. Wakar Yunus was his inspiration, but sadly, he never quite materialized, although he did have some success in the Indian Cricket League. If Nabi was the dream, then Malik is the reality. His second over starts with Harsha Bogle mentioning that the slip is right on the edge of the 30 yard circle. The second ball is a wicket, and it's short and at the body, and Shabazz Abed is beaten for pace as he tries to flick this around the corner. But by the time he catches up with it, he can only feather it down the leg side for Nicholas Piran to complete a great diving catch. The following ball, Hasaranga is beaten by a fast delivery, and it's angled in at him and moves away. This isn't an excellent T20 ball. It would be brilliant in any format to pretty much any batter. A few balls later, Hasaranga is playing across the ball, trying to hit it to leg, and ends up with it outside off stop. It looks uncomfortable and no fun for anyone. And there is a fun story from the beginning of Malik's career when he was at the Sunrisers, when Johnny Bairstow was facing Malik in the nets and asked him to bowl slower. Apparently the extra pace was not helping with his preparation. When Malik finally bowled in the IPL, it only took a couple of deliveries for everyone to notice him. This was clearly next level pace. The third over begins with a Chiron on the screen that asks a simple question. Is Umar Malik the fastest bowler India has ever produced? Sunil Gavaskar suggests that you can only know that for the modern era. However, where were all the very fast Indian bowlers historically? We never really saw that many of them. Jafagal Srinath was slippery, but he wasn't fast, fast. Zahi Khan was quite fast at the beginning of his career. I'm not sure he was anywhere near this level. And before those two, there just wasn't out and out fast bowlers for India. Of recent times, that has obviously started to change. Jasprit Bumrah, Varun Aaron, Ishan Sharma, Umesh Yadav have all been very fast or at the very least capable of rapid deliveries at times. 
The big difference is that Umrah Malik is consistently fast. His slowest on-pace balls are not slow. And he really doesn't bother with slower balls that much because consistent high pace is something else. There is no let up. If you don't like deliveries at this speed, well, bad luck because this isn't a one-off effort ball. This is his normal speed, his stock delivery. The speeds of this match came up on the screen at this point and it said his slowest was 138.6 kilometers per hour, which is still decently quick. But his average speed was 145 kilometers per hour or 90 miles an hour. To do that consistently, is hard for even the fastest bowlers in the world. Although in this particular case, it's helped by the fact that Umar Malik doesn't really have a slower ball. Only 2.8% of his deliveries are under 130 kilometers an hour. But because he is so quick, you could assume that maybe some of his slower balls are the ones in the low 130s. But either way, he only bowls 6.4% of his deliveries at 130 to 139 kilometers per hour. So at the very most, he bowls a slower ball every 10 deliveries. And in truth, it's probably far less than that. These are not normal rates for a modern bowler. He did actually get another wicket given on the field, a DRS that was overturned on a court behind. And at one stage, Harsha Bogle excitedly exclaimed, two slips in the 12th over. Wow, as Malik finishes his third. The fourth over has some pace in it. The first five balls are 151, 148, 151, 141, and 147 kilometers per hour. That is probably why 77% of the fan polls suggested that Malik is the fastest bowler ever. Sure, there's some recency bias in that, but it's getting harder to argue. In fact, he's at that level of quickness where Kevin Peterson is asking whether it actually matters if he has good line or length or not. This is all happening while Josh Hazelwood is backing away and playing a shot so tentative it apologizes for the play and miss. But the commentators are not even interested in each individual ball. They're talking about Sean Tate and Mitchell Johnson. Later, it will be Shah Bakhtar as well. Although the conversation about Shah Bakhtar actually happens after Malik finishes his spell. It's in Marco Janssen's over. The man who set up the win, but they're still talking about Umran Malik. Janssen took Faf Du Plessis, Virat Kohli, and Anuj Rat in an over. T. Nadarajan was pretty good too, knocking out Harsha Patel and Hasaranga stumps while taking Glenn Maxwell. Even the spinner took three wickets. But the man with one wicket when the game was pretty much already won is the one who gets all the attention. Put it this way, in the mid-match interview during the game, Dale Steyn is asked about Malik before Janssen. In the innings break, Kevin Peterson is still talking about Malik unprompted, even as they showed the other bowlers taking wickets. RCB were dismissed for 68, and the bowler with one victim is the main story and has been kind of most of the way through. And you can put some of that down to the fact he is young, new, and an Indian quick. Although a lot of it is just because he's new and very quick. The real proof is the way the commentators reacted to the two bounces in that first over. The first one is the one I described earlier, but the last one was just as important. It flashed by as a missed hook shot, and it was his second delivery over the shoulder, meaning it was a no ball, so RCB would get a free hit. Usually a mistake like that would get the commentators upset with the bowler. Instead, Hayden bellowed, bring it on, bring it on, while Peterson was just laughing. Shabazz Ahmed slapped the free hit over cover for a boundary meaning that the extra bouncer cost sunrises around 7% of RCB's total. No one cares though, because Umar Malik is fast. Yeah.